Hey y'all, it's Kayla J here. So this one today, <laughs> it's not, uh, I'm not really excited about it, but uh, it's important. And it's, it's necessary and it's important to God. So obviously it's important to me and I'm going to do it. Um, but it's like not one of those where it's fun and it's, it's just kind of like, dang, I guess because it's a reality check and it's like, yeah, it's a reality check. Anyways, let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Oh, God. Teach us how to be faithful like you are, Lord. Teach us how to only have one master in our heart, which is you. Teach us how to forsake all others on account of you, Lord, um, because you've done that for us. And so, God, help us to mirror you. Help us to be truly in your image, not only in how we treat people, not only in how we love people, but how we are faithfulness. Lord God, it's the fruit of the spirit. And mm, I imagine that you have great reason for that. And scripture shows that you have great reason that faithfulness be a fruit of the spirit. My God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we ask for forgiveness, Lord God. Forgive our sins, Lord. Forgive us for the things that we've done that have not pleased you, that have just des you have despised. Forgive us for thinking that we could just do this or that and there will be no consequences. God, you are an honorable, honorable God. And and even in our forgiveness, Lord God, um, we understand that there are consequences attached to our sins. And Lord, um, we deserve it. We deserve the consequences. But today, God, I'm asking for a holy pardon I'm asking God for a holy, yeah, I'm asking for a holy pardoning in the in the spirit realm. And I'm asking that the consequences that are due us, I'm asking that you pardon us from the crime, pardon us from the sin, pardon us from the transgression, the iniquities, Lord God. I'm asking for a holy pardon today. We deserve it. We deserve death, hell, and the grave. But today I'm asking for a pardon on behalf of me and my bloodline. God, you said I could declare and ask for forgiveness on behalf of my bloodline according to Leviticus 26. So whatever idols were erected, whatever sins, iniquities that are now the third and fourth generation is experiencing, Lord God, I ask for forgiveness and I'm asking for a holy pardon. So may the curses that are literally dwelling now, uh, may they dry up. Yeah, may they dry up because of this holy pardoning in the in the spirit. I pray this person watching is asking you for the same thing on account of their family because they probably can see the curses running rampant in their family so or the consequences of the curses um lord god even after denouncing and renouncing the curses so i pray for a holy pardoning in jesus name amen i don't know how to be faithful y'all i don't know how to be faithful god in his word calls us adulterous whoremongers <laughs> gosh because we don't know how to be faithful and let me not speak for you maybe you know how to be faithful to god but for the most part majority of us do not know how to be faithful to god um god wants us to be his betrothed like imagine if we're to be the bride of christ right imagine being the bride of your husband or the groom to your bride, men of God. Imagine your wife saying that she's forsaking all others for you, but wears another man's shirt to bed, has jewelry from another man, right? Um, another man is hidden in the crevices of her heart has a thing for him. She chooses this other man over you often. You asked her to hang out on Friday night. She said, no, nah, I want to hang out with this other man. That's how God feels. That's what God, that's what we do to God. There's a verse, I'll put it on the screen, but it says, in their stomach is their God. God wants to be our God. That's how he feels about these idols in our lives, y'all, in our life. I was doing a fast the other day and as soon as that fast ended, uh, 
couldn't wait to just eat what I wanted. And, and I felt God's disdain. And I was like, God, but I did what you, you know, what you asked me to do. Like I fasted and he was just like, a fast isn't just to check it off your list to say you did it. A fast is, we fast so God can, so we can humble ourselves and God can change our hearts because it's supposed to soften our hearts to hear from God. Like what God is going to do for us is already done. We don't fast to make God move faster, right? He is going to move faster, but contingent upon him moving faster is if he can do the work in our hearts faster, right? That's what it's for. Or, or if we, and we even fast to seek God's will and to, God, am I, I'm believing for this thing, but what do you have to say about it? And just doing it all, I was doing it all wrong. Um, and it's possible to be to have fasted your whole life and to still do it wrong. I've been fasting for what? Um, about seven, eight years now. And it's still possible for me to be doing it wrong. Uh, so he was just like, your heart posture was all wrong. The God of your stomach, that's the guy that was speaking louder than me. I, What work could I accomplish during the fast when all you could think about was food? Oh my God. So I say that to say, y'all, we don't know how to be, I don't know how to be faithful. I mean, I want you to examine your life. It could be music. It could be people. I told God I'll never let a man be on the throne of my heart again and make him my God. Now, of course, it's different when you're in holy matrimony, your husband. Um, it's different, right? Your wife, when you're in holy matrimony, when you're in a covenant, it's different. Nonetheless, that person should never come before God. So we have to ask God to teach us how to be faithful, to teach us. How, and I, I believe it is really just, Paul says it like this, I die daily. And, and that's killing our flesh, I believe, will help us to become more faithful to God. Ah, oh, you okay, That's why, you see why I didn't want to do this one? Because, ah! Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I have some scripture because when God revealed to me, I don't know how to, I didn't know how to be faithful. I was like, well, what you mean? And then he took me to the scripture and every scripture was like a dagger. And which it should be what the say in Ephesians, I think the word of God is sharper than any sword cutting, cutting bone and marrow. That's how sharp the word of God is. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Real talk, bone and marrow. That's how, where's my Bible? I don't have my Bible with me, but that's how sharp the word of God is. Mm. Okay. Let's get to the first one. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because of his compassion fail not. Excuse me. Because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He's so faithful to give us mercies every morning. To give us compassion every morning. My God. Deuteronomy 7, 8 through 9. But because the Lord loves you, because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, that's faithfulness to do what he said he was going to do. The Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage and from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore, know that the Lord, your God, he is God. He, excuse me, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for thousands of generations with those who love him and keeps the, his commandments. Oh, it's just showing... I think this verse really shows the track record of his faithfulness. It says a thousand generations. He keeps his covenant. It's not God that breaks these covenants. It's us, y'all. Just like in marriage, these people get married and haphazardly exit the marriage, haphazardly enter the marriage. And it's just like, We have to learn how to be more like Jesus. You entered into a covenant and now you're breaking said covenant. Where is your faithfulness? Ah. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. 
The one who call who calls you is faithful. He will do it. My God. The one who calls you, he calls us. He it says those who he read <laughs> it wrong. Those who he foreknew, he also predestined. Those who he predestined, he also called. I don't though he also justified. Those who he justified, he also called. Is that it? Let me get this. Okay, this is Romans 8, 30 through 31. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. That's a beautiful chain link of his faithfulness. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? What a faithful, beautiful God we serve. Okay, Psalms 91, 4. He shall cover you with his feathers and under the wings you shall take refuge. He shall, excuse me, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some definitions of the word faithfulness, excuse me, some uh, synonyms, I guess. Uh, firmness, truth, sureness, reliability, stability, con continuance, faithfulness, reliability, re reliableness, truth, as spoken of testimony and judgment of divine instruction truth as a body of ethical or religious knowledge knowledge a true doctrine mm, y'all he is faithful to us so why can't we be faithful to him he he has set his eye on us and he it hasn't moved wow god forgive us for not being able to be faithful Exodus 20, 14 says, you shall not commit adultery. We've been committing adultery, y'all. We, and like, like I said, I don't want to speak for you. So if this doesn't apply to you, then praise God. Teach us, not you teach us, Lord. Here I go, trying to have a person teach me, God. And yes, he does call people to teach us. But like, sometimes God is like, me, I want to do it. Why, why not get it right from the source? Um... So if you don't struggle with being unfaithful to God, then that's great for you. Um, pray for the rest of us. But for those who do, uh, we are committing, a, we have to understand that we're committing adultery um, when we are doing this. Um, mm, 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 mm. And, you know, God revealed something to me when I... Um, when I left my sorority, um, it was like January, January of like 20, January this year, uh, there was a Martin Luther King parade and all the Greeks were like walking, you know, and strolling. And I saw the sorority strolling and um, I got really sad. I got really sad. I was like, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. I was like, dang, you know, I, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy with God, but I do miss it. I miss that aspect. I miss the dancing and the, and, um, yeah, I missed it for a second. Actually not for a second. I missed it that day. And, and I even felt it coming home. And I, I was like, God, you gotta help me with this. Why do I feel this way? Like you told me to leave and I, I stand by that decision because you show, you showed me the implications of the demonic covenant that I made with someone who was not you with another lowercase g God with an idol. So I stand in that, but why do I feel this way? And God was just like, Kaylee, you have to look at it like a divorce. You married this idol. Now, a lot of people have idols in their hearts. Um, and it's like, and I don't think there's even like big little idols, but people have idols in their hearts. And when they're in your hearts, oftentimes we are married to those idols and we don't even know. But for me, as it relates to this sorority, it was like an actual marriage ceremony, right? It was the initiation of wearing white, kneeling. And God even said, he was like, he told me that day when I was sad, he was like, it's equivalent to you having a having me your husband i'm supposed to be your man and 
you having another man on the side, you wearing this man's shirts, the lot letters on my chest, you wearing this man's bracelets and necklaces and and you even wearing this stuff and flaunting this man in my sanctuary. He was like, that's how you made me feel when you were in that sorority. And it's like, dang, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that I made that idol my husband, that I married that idol. And so when I left, literally the day that I sent my letter in, um, some well, I woke up before I, before I already wrote the letter, I was going to mail it that day. The day I sent it in, a, a friend texted me who was in the same process with a whole, completely different organization, with a completely different sorority. She sent me a text and said, this was playing when I woke up and I felt the Lord saying, I needed to send it to you. It was a song entitled Congratulations. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. But I wonder like why God told her. This was November 15th. Um, like, I wonder why Holy Spirit told her to send it to me. But thank you. I received it. Congratulations. I don't know what's coming. And that day I sent my letter off in January. God revealed to me. Um, this was before the parade. But God revealed to me. He was like, you divorced the idol in your heart way before November. I think it was in October when I really d divorced the idol out of my heart. But he was like, November 15th, even though you, it wasn't necessary that you... Um, make it official because I already knew it was in your heart. I'm glad you made it official. And the only reason I did make it official was because I was going to do that anyways, first of all, but I made it official so quickly was because I was just like, I know I'm going to have to help other people through this process of writing the letter, denouncing. Um, and so he told me, he was just like, when you sent that letter off, we officially married because God, he was just like, I can't marry everyone. I want to, that's my desire, but people have it in their hearts where there's no room for me and I won't compete. And God was just saying, the day you sent that letter off, that's why the song Congratulations was sent to me because he was like, you just, you told me that you wanted to marry me. That was your gesture of you saying, and God was like, we married that day. Um, and I was able to be the bride of Christ in November. And he didn't tell me this until January because I was in such a sweet place with God. It was so Man, I've never felt this, y'all. I swear. It was like such a peace, such a tranquility. In January, I felt, and I was like, man, God, why am I feeling this? And um, someone got a word. This, the girl who was going through the same thing I was, right? Sent her letter off the same day I did in a different org. Um, that's why God is so faithful to like send people alongside of you to do what he wants you to do. But she got a prophetic word that day from her job and the woman said you're on a honeymoon with god right now and the lady was just like enjoy this time with god it's such a sweet serene time y'all when she told me that something leaped in my spirit i was like oh my god that's why i feel this way because i'm on a honeymoon with god and so yeah god just revealed to me that when i forsake forsook forsake the that huge idol that was in my heart that i literally married wore white and everything god said that we he was able to marry me because there was room in my heart for just him and um yeah and, and even now that i am married to god i struggle with still being faithful right not going back to that idol but um just like in that verse i think it's in matthew when it says um after the demon has been cast out and your house has been swept right? House is clear, empty. Um, the demon comes back with seven more spirits as worse, worse off than he, which shows us y'all that we have to replace whatever we take out. We have to replace it with something or it will be replaced with something even worse. And so replace it with God. And so when I denounced, I replaced it with God, right? And so that's why I'm not looking for a quote unquote sisterhood within my church choir, you know, I'm not looking to make a replica of a sorority and not call it that. And not, you know, I'm not looking to make any replicas because I don't need it because I replaced it with the love of God, with the marriage of God. And so, yeah, um, but I still struggle. Like I said, in their stomach is their God. I'll put that, I will put that on the screen, but in their stomach is their God and music 
God was just like, Kayla, I am so very sick of having to come and clean up after you have cried yourself to sleep. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just loving this song. Um, Love's Train by Confunction. It's like from the 80s, 70s. I love it. And, or like, <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass, Love TKO. Just cry myself to sleep with these sad, slow jam songs. And God is like, I am some certain songs carry. And I'm not even saying these songs, but God was just saying certain songs carry spirits of sadness, spirits of anger, spirits of lust. And God was just like, I'm so sick of having to come after these. You listen to the you drown me out with this music, with these songs in your sadness. And after you've cried yourself to sleep, I have to come and repair when in the first place, I wanted you to come and talk to me instead of crying your eyes out listening to a song that brought on an even heavier cloak of sadness. And I do that a lot. And I'm obviously trying to stop. And I, I think I have. I've done really well. Um, ebbs and flows. Because recently I was, a show was down bad and I was listening to some slow, sad songs. Um, but God was just like, stop ha ha making me come after these songs to repair what these evil spirits have done in bringing the sadness to you even more. Um, God was like, just come to me first and come to me first and worship is your weapon. Cause I, y'all, it works. I'm telling you, I was very sad a couple Sundays ago and um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. I put on a worship upbeat song, y'all. And even I don't sometimes I don't even need music, right? Because yes, music is used in the Bible, um, but some you don't even need music. If you got a song in your heart of God, um, and a melody from the Lord. And so I just but I begin to like just jump and dance and I swear that cloak of heaviness slipped right off of me and I was good. And so I know it works, it's tried and true. It's just sometimes I'm like, No, I don't wanna do it and Lord please forgive me. But yeah, um, so I say that to say like an idol of that, just of choosing music over God, of choosing to drown God out and wanting music to make me feel better or making an idol of the situation, of making an idol of the sadness, choosing to be sad and not choosing God, right? So yeah, um, it's a process. Even though I am married to God, I, <laughs> I still struggle with being completely faithful. And I imagine this will be a lifelong journey, but um, I'm thanking him that he's with me and he will continue, his Holy Spirit will continue to convict me along the way of like, you know, like you veering off, you you know, so grateful for a God that is merciful. And what does one of them say? Like his mercies are new, something like that. Um, and his compassion never fails. Yeah, in Lamentations 3.22, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because of his compassions, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Thank you, God, for your compassion and your mercies. So, yeah, we serve a faithful God, y'all, so we have to be faithful to him. No ifs, ands, or buts. We have to be faithful to this God. So, I pray this video blessed you. I pray it minister to you. I pray the Lord blesses you. I pray he keeps you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. Hmm. That's according to uh, number 6, 24 through 26. I pray according to Jude 1, 2, that um, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied unto you according to what is it? Philemon 1, literally the last verse. I can't think of the number, but I pray that... Um, his grace dwell in your spirit. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Pray he gives you the grace to be faithful to him. To show him to, to be that one. Because everybody's not faithful to him. So to be that one person in your family, in your friend group, in, in your church. To no matter what. That's my man and I'm going to stick beside him. <sighs> Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right, y'all. Oh waiting well um 
what do I have to say? Like the verse says, what then can we say to these things? I don't know what to say. Just wait well. Um, it's a little, a little exhausting. But I'm only exhausted because I'm not waiting well in God's strength. I'm waiting well in my strength. And of course, that will lead to fatigue, right? So wait well in God's strength. Ask God to help you wait well. Um, and while you wait well, might as well get the book to wait well with the book and God. So also, please don't try to read this without the Bible. Don't try to read this without Holy Spirit. Um, it won't really land and do the heart work that it's supposed to do if you're just reading it out of context, which is the Bible. So love you guys. Also, deliverance from demonic covenants and curses, y'all. Get this book because there are so many. Okay, this is not supposed to be this long. I'm so sorry, but really quick. I was watching Holes the other day. My God, what a prophetic movie. But it was about, um, maybe y'all seen Holes with Shia LaBeouf, right? But um, the family was cursed because of something the great grandfather did. He went to a fortune teller. Fortune teller cursed them. Y'all need to stop going to these mediums to get answers that only God can give you because the mediums don't care about you but the mediums are looking and the fortune tellers and the witches are looking to curse generations down the line Shia LaBeouf the whole main character was the fourth Stanley in his family the Bible says I look to punish the sins of the fathers for the third and fourth generations and we even see that the grandpa the daddy and the son was cursed because of what the great grandfather did y'all and so i say that to say um it was just so unfortunate in the movie they kept saying it's because of what that old pig stealing rotten grand great great grandfather of yours did that were cursed but they didn't know how to break it they didn't know their authority in jesus christ how to break the curse and it just so happened that because of the good deeds that the grandson did the great 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 grandson did that the curse was broken glory to god but it could have been broken two generations before and then not living in calamity and poverty um if they knew how to break the curse y'all curses are easy to like break it's just hard to like pinpoint oh that's a curse to discover and so ask god what are some curses speaking over your life and there in the back of this book are um prayer points to breaking to breaking curses um so yeah